Hi, everyone. How are you doing? It is uh, Peter here from PDG Advertising, and we are back with another episode of Business Conversations with Peter Doak and Martin Gilchrist. But unfortunately, Martin isn't with us uh, this evening. Um, I am devastated. Uh, we, I was chatting to him today. And uh, looking forward to him being back in the saddle as our, our co-host. And when you're watching this back, Martin, um, if this all goes horribly wrong without you, it's completely your your fault. Um, so yes, we're looking forward to Martin being being back. Um, this week has been interesting, for sure. Um, I guess on Wednesday last week, we uh, had our uh, excellent um, session um, and it was a really good uh, video and you can check that back on the on the playback. Um, then on Thursday, um, I think the whole uh, world, certainly this part of the world, went into a certain um, sense of shock with the, with the passing of um, the Queen. It's incredibly uh, sad and... Um, our sympathies go out uh, to to the family and to uh, everybody that um, is feeling it right now. It's, it's just created a sense of I don't know uh, uncertainty in a in an altogether un, uncertain uncertain time. Um, but onwards and and upwards with our uh, business uh, conversations uh, podcast. This week we have a, an incredible guest. Um, it's called William Redpath. I'm going to bring him in in a couple of moments. Um, I'll let William uh, introduce himself and what he does. And we're going to have our business conversation. Um, and we'll see how we go with just myself. Um, on it. hopefully we don't uh, completely mess it up. But I'm going to bring in William right now, and we'll uh, we'll get started. William should be joining us uh, shortly. Unless, of course, we have technical difficulties, and then that will be interesting. I think William has just joined us. Excellent. There he is. Hi, William. How are you doing? I'm good, Peter. How are you? Good, thank you. William, thanks so much for joining us on what is the um, 17th episode of Business Conversations. Um, we've had some excellent guests. I've been really excited to have you on as a as a guest. Um, we've known you coming on for a while, and um, just really appreciate you taking the time to come and speak to us. Thanks for having me, Peter. <laughs> I've been um, excited uh, to come on since I've heard about it. Fabulous. And uh, just a note: we've got some uh, wonderful people in our live audience, and what happens, uh, William, is we um invite uh, the live audience to comment or ask any questions as we go through and I'll I'll check periodically you know for um any comments or questions that that do do come through um but onward and as I said I'm really looking forward to having you on um I don't want to uh, try to explain what you do or go over who you are um I think that's best done by your yourself so Maybe you wouldn't mind giving our audience uh, a bit of an intro into who you are and, and what it is you do. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you, Peter, again. Um, yeah, so like, so my name is William Redpass, I guess. I'm the owner and director of a company called Manabu Learning. Uh, what the company does is work with remote working companies to try and engage and develop their people. So it's really as simple as that. We kind of do that via different methods. We have some calm stuff that we do. So we do some uh, campaigns, email campaigns, that type of things, to create some content for them to help them work with their people. But we also do team building events online as well. And we do some one-to-one -one and group coaching. But through those, I guess, three things, we help those remote working companies engage and develop their workforce. Uh, that's kind of where we fit in really with that. Um, Outside of that, Peter, I have a lot of hobbies and interests as well. I'm not telling you them all, but if it's helpful for this evening, uh, I was president of the Junior Chamber in Belfast in 2018. I'm still a really proud member of that and was really proud to be able to bring 
the UK family, our colleagues from around the UK to Belfast for our national convention in 2019, just before COVID, which was which was really good uh, to reconnect with a lot of older members here. So really proud to be a member of that. I'm also, as, you, as some people know, uh, I'm a big fan of remote work. So I'm part of a movement called Grow Remote. Uh, they're a bit more established in the Republic of Ireland, to be fair to say, but we're trying to make some waves, so to speak, in Northern Ireland as well, and trying to improve access to the workforce for everyone, regardless of where they live. So those would be kind of what I'm into. I also play some sport as well, when I've got a little bit of time. Um, I play a wee bit of hockey as well and do some running. But um, those would be kind of my, my key business interests and extracurricular activities, such as they are. Take me back to uh, school, school William, William in school. Mm -hmm. What type of uh -huh. subjects did you like? What were you, what were you good at? What did you absolutely hate? It's uh, so I really loved doing like uh, like creative subjects and writing. Um, I studied history mainly. Uh, I kind of focused on that. I don't actually think it was my best subject actually, but I did it. I did it at school mainly, and then all at university were in Glasgow. But uh, interestingly, I actually did business studies to AS and um, I was I was really good at it in GCSE. It was a real teacher's pet, you know, in GCSE. And then I did it in AS and I remember, I told someone the story recently. I went to the parent-teachers meeting on, in AS in Lower Sixth and uh, my business studies teacher, who up until then had been like my number one fan, she thought it was great. Uh, in GCSE and I had the same teacher in AS she turned around to my dad and she said I think William's got worse <laughs> so needless to say I'd give up business studies in an AS I didn't carry it on uh, to my final year but like um, it was kind of funny I think because I feel like I've had a bit of a redemption arc of going on and starting my own business a couple of years ago in fact, uh, it might even lead to, I'm going to be doing some work with Young Enterprise and I might even be going back to my own old school quite soon. So I might even be able to run into my old business studies teacher as part of that work, Peter, which would be quite fun. Yeah, I, I've i done work with Young Enterprise. It's a wonderful mm. organization. Um, I am a business mentor uh, for them and, and have been in the past for the, the Boys Model School in Belfast. And it's a, it's an incredibly rewarding journey that you go on with uh, with the kids in the schools that you're working with. They're mm. incredibly bright, uh, a lot brighter than I think I was at at school. Um, and it's really interesting to see see how they how they go. So, um, what did you? So the business right now is Manabu Learning. Mm -hmm. And what did you do before that? Uh, I spent eight years working in telecommunications. So I worked for a local uh, telecoms company after a community university. So I pretty much worked for them from when I graduated until, yep, eight years later. And I worked in a variety of different roles. Like I worked in the call center for the most part of that, probably about five or six of those eight years. Like I was either on the phones or I was like a team leader type person. Uh, and then after that, I was out in the road doing some field sales and kind of finished up in more of like a, department lead type position there went off to america for a wee bit at the end of that which was really fun i got like on an exchange trip which if anybody's watching this and gets the opportunity to do that i would really recommend uh taking the chance that was really really good and then when i came back i kind of figured that i didn't want to go back into nine to five employment i wanted to start my own business uh but the realities of doing that of course as we all know are that you need an income uh, so I was, but I was also in need of money and really lucky to be able to go on and do something else for a couple of years and work part time in Youth Action Northern Ireland as a youth worker. I've been kind of volunteering as a youth worker because my mom's been involved with that organization for about 30 years. Uh, I've been doing that for probably the best part of a decade and doing like mentoring for young people who are usually outside of like the education system and like working with them. So I was really lucky to be able to do that for part-time for a couple of years and then yeah this year I've kind of been just doing my business full-time so um yeah it's been a it's been pretty good but I've been doing that so I've had I guess a bit of experience of like the private sector like working in that for eight years then in the community voluntary sector but get a lot of experience with like informal education 
and like trying to engage people in in different ways that maybe aren't engaged in in the traditional ways uh so that's really the 10 years i suppose up until before like my career experience before starting my business so what's it like um before you start your own business and after what's that transition like and what what has it been like for you um i think that the who you are who you are changes a lot um like which is kind of mad i remember um speaking to yeah i think this is kind of important to share as well because i spoke to somebody about it this morning i think the big change is that like whenever i was working before i think probably like it was good and i got lots of good things from that business but i think that whenever it was at kind of the end of that journey was maybe a little bit burnt out with it and maybe just needed a bit of a change and probably as a result of that i was quite quick to stress or quick to temper in that way and like just wasn't really myself because it try to be quite a happy person and so I think from starting a business and working harder than I've ever worked like in terms of the actual hours of work that you do but actually a lot happier and a much happier person so I think the first thing first way I would answer your question is that I think man like mentally have changed a lot and like how I think about work and how my work makes me makes me really happy and brings me a lot of joy I think that's been the biggest thing uh it's also fair to say that like when you start your own business, even working part time as a youth worker, you get a lot less money <laughs> than you like than I had when I was working in the private sector. That's a hundred percent true. But like everyone kind of has to go through that period of like sacrifice. I think in a financial sense, which isn't easy because there's certain things that society expects. I think in terms of like what age you are and like etc. So it's sometimes a bit tricky to swallow that pill, but you kind of do it because there's a bigger a bigger reward maybe in the in the long run so um i think there's the mental change the financial change but, pr- but probably the biggest change and transition for me is how i'm able how i'm able to develop and use my skills so i think whenever i was working uh generally and probably for most of us you're working within a small kind of area of focus uh and this affects a lot of people i think like at any kind of job they're in immensely talented gifted people outside of work in, in maybe creative ways or other or other hobbies or talents that they may have but in work they may be in a quite a small area and it's something they're kind of focused on um and i guess for me it was probably that whereas i guess for my business i'm able to bring hopefully most of the skills that i have to what i do for work now uh, and that's a really affirming thing i think peter so the transition has been that kind of mental thing which has been huge and in a really positive way the financial thing which is which like was a initially jarring kind of experience but like you kind of get used to it and then the third thing which is just more around how you're able to really do what you're best at and make money doing that which i think is a really really yeah as i say affirming thing to be able to be able to do i find it really interesting that question for people because everybody's answer is a little bit different uh, but mm-hmm. they're all completely bang on like everybody that i've asked they always hit some of those points of just that mind mind shift change because you've been doing something or been in a certain mindset for 20 years or 10 years or however long it is and mm-hmm. suddenly you're in charge you're the you're the person you've taken that leap you don't have that financial security it's it's down to it's down to you and I, I think it's a really brave thing that uh that people people do um i think, so. I think it's pretty co- cool. pretty cool um more of that i think more of that yeah for sure well what about people who do you know multiple 10 different businesses and that you know i i really envy those people like the or even someone who has a business that's beyond successful i always look at them and think wow the work that has to have gone into that you do I whenever I looked at like Coca Cola or um, Caterpillar or uh, any of those huge companies before I started my own business, I had no idea of the sacrifice, the difficulty, the hurdles, the amount of things that have been had the potential to wipe those companies out probably across time, and it's some it's it's an incredible thing to have a have a really uh, successful business. And speaking of incredibly successful businesses, 
So Manabu Learning, um, what what's what's it a, what's it about? What are you what are you trying? I know you give us the the intro at the at the start, but what why why do that? Why why go into that business? Why does that float your boat? Because it is the classic. Uh, what I can, what I do well, what the world needs, and I can make money out of. I think it fits into all those like it's that like ikigai thing. I think that uh, the Japanese expression like it fits into it fits into all those boxes really because uh, I'm good at those. I'm good at like uh, working with groups. Um, I think I'm a good listener. I I think I'm quite a creative person. You know how I've been able to create like these online events and be able to like deliver escape rooms and murder mysteries and these types of things, do them online with people in like from different cultures and different languages. And so I think I'm good at that, but I'll stop blowing my trumpet now. But you need to know what you're good at, I think. And um but the second thing about what the world needs, I, I try to look at the, the the way in which the business is delivered now online wasn't the original concept of the business, but certainly the principles behind it have, have said the same from that those first thoughts I had around the end of 2019, which were trying to be what I think I needed maybe uh, in my old work, like try and if the, if, if the business I was now was available to me and the stuff that we were doing was available to me whenever I was in my own job, I think I would have been a lot happier because there would have been um, engagement with me, development with me, and there would have been uh, probably a space and, and place for me to show off what I could do, to develop, to uh, to do that and kind of grow a bit more in the business. So I, anyway, the, it, in terms of like what the world needs, that was me, but there were also like tons of other people like, like me. So I was like, well, I want to do those things uh, for those people. And I want to be able to like, you know, help those people go to work happier, basically, I think is, is as simple as it is. That's what I wanted to do. Um, and then in terms of making money at it, that actually, the third one's a bit of an interesting one because in a weird way, like nobody ever woke up in the morning and said, I really want to do an online escape room today. <laughs> They're like, or like, you know what I really need is like an online escape room right now. Nobody like does that, but like for some reason, people have decided to buy it and, 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 and take part in these things. And I guess it's because the, 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 the realities of, of remote work for many people mean that some of the things which are sacrificed are connection, the experience, higher degrees of isolation. Uh, there's a lot of amazing things about remote work as well, which I can talk about, but those would be some of the drawbacks. And I've experienced those as well. I know speaking at home, I've recently got an office in Belfast, which you go to quite a bit as well. Um, but I've worked, I worked from here for a long time. And um, I think it's just like uh, trying to do trying to do something for those people but it's weird because you almost like uh, this is the third point about making money at something you almost create a market in a way like there's 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 a problem there and you try to think of a way in which you can approach that problem in a creative or different way and that's what we have tried to do with our business so like and it and it's been a really neat fit and a really good match because more or less people experience it and say we've never done something like this before i wish we did stuff like this more often when can we do it again you know you get all these kind of comments uh, because it, it's moving away from that more staid experience of like PowerPoint presentation about like mental health or which, you know, has its place. But when you do it all the time, it maybe loses some of its luster uh, or the Zoom quiz or the, you know, um, Friday night dr drinks thing. You know, it, it, it's kind of like trying to approach that in a more creative way. And that's really what we've done. So I think it's just, you, you've asked me about the business. I think it's really, as I say, it's about, what I think I'm good at, what I think the world needs, and then what I can make, what I can make money at as well. I'm also like quite a curious person, Peter. So I, I like, I quite like trying out new things and quite like technology and how technology can make work a little bit easier for us all. So being able to apply a lot of those technological nuggets and bits in the work we do is is fun as well. And it, this gives me like a nice excuse to do that. But as well. That is fabulous. It's so interesting and inspirational because it's. You get people, many people uh, that you know create a business with the sole purpose of of making making money, and regularly they fail. You know they usually they usually fail if that's the if that's the if that's the thing. Um, 
that trio of, you know, something you enjoy and are good at, something that the world needs and something that makes money, that's 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 great. <laughs> that's that's yeah, uh, I think it's really excellent. It's not by the way, it's like I'm talking about that like now. Uh I don't want to give anyone the impression that like I've either worked it out or that like day one I was that comfortable talking about that stuff because I think I've gone through my own journey uh as a business owner to try and get to this point uh that and that's that's something we all have to kind of experience but I think you only get there by trying things and by speaking to your clients and staying with your clients and understanding what's going on for them what's what they need and that helps you answer the question so if the exam question is like how do I get those three things I think that you have to do a little bit of soul searching around yourself and you have to like think about okay would other people need this type of thing and how do I speak to those people and get feedback about my idea and then how do I really speak to clients in a kind of more direct way and say would you pay for this thing and I think people are very gracious and very charitable um most people are they'll tell you if they will and sometimes they even give you really good suggestions about I would pay for that but if you tweaked it like this or if this bit was part of it I'd be really keen so sometimes just by putting yourself out there and being a little bit more vulnerable Peter you can actually move much faster than just worrying about all the things that could go wrong on your own. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's so so interesting. I, I think that adaptability is is totally key to yeah. everything. Nothing's nothing's rigid and it's you know it needs to be needs to be uh flexible for sure. It it's a topic and a subject, you know, homework and um engagement, um being happy in whatever you're doing is is a is a big thing. Uh, for me, um, so as a business owner who uh, has always kind of had a hybrid uh, environment, not always, I guess, maybe in the early days of PDG advertising, um, I had people coming into the coming into the office. Uh, I don't all the time. I mean, like nine to five. Um, and I don't think it was this was pre pandemic before anybody knew the word coronavirus mm. or anything yeah. like that and it, it was unheard of that you couldn't go into the office that you would be told that you're not allowed to leave the leave the house mm -hmm. that feels like 10 years ago but it's not it's it's it about, does actually yeah you're you know, right. three or four years ago i guess whenever that that was reality and it wasn't because we wanted uh it wasn't because we uh, wanted people in the office it was just because that was the norm that was how things that was how things happened however all of our customers more or less at that time were outside of the uk so mm -hmm. we were doing business remotely doing it over the over the phone it never really clicked that we could all just all work from work from home i always had a kind of a dream that people could work from wh wherever they wanted but we never really executed it we never really uh tried it out and then wallop uh, COVID comes and you can't go to the office, so get the laptop and you go home and you you remote work and we're all we're all thrust into that. Now we're coming out of all of that. Um, home working has not gone away. Um, it is either the norm or it is going to be the norm. And I think there's this current um, uh, tug of war happening at the moment i'm not sure who's on either side of the tug of war but i know that i hear about it in the news uh, an awful lot mm, um yeah. what's it's a big question but what's your what's your take on the future of work and and that in terms of you know is it back to the office is it um remote work i appreciate your business would say that it's you know um not back to the office but what where do you think the general direction is is going for companies now I think it's remote work. Like, um, I think all the statistics would bear that out. There's a there's a um thing sometimes that we we see or certainly experience post COVID and, and like this kind of reflex of people wanting to come back to the office and connect. But as it settles, as we settle, I think that um there the the typical experience for somebody working in the UK and Ireland will be there will be some time in the office and some time spent at home. I think that that will be driven by a number of factors, 
mainly by employees because that's what they demand. Uh, there's some good examples over the summer of like friends of mine that work in big corporations and anecdotally going into the office on uh, during the summer and there being no one around because people want to spend time with their children when they're off school and have that extra hour or two that they get back of the day because they're not commuting. I think this is this is one aspect. It'll always be driven by the employees. However, we all read the news and we know that there's challenges around utilities, energy, costs of running offices. So there, there will be, I think, a uh, willing participant in the employers as well if they have to open their offices less often uh, because they won't have to spend as much money. I think it'll be always driven by the market, which is the employees in this case. Uh, we, we see that as well being played out in terms of recruitment and the high difficult it is at the moment to recruit for a lot of positions, even locally in Belfast. So for me, I think the future is remote. It's very important then that companies are setting themselves up to thrive remotely and work really well remotely. There's a really, I'm going to refer to a model here, uh, which I think is really excellent, uh, which will help companies try and understand where they are with this. But it's called the um, the remote and hybrid maturity model. It's a, it's a document that's been researched and produced by Grow Remote uh, over the last five years of them working with remote workers around Ireland. And uh, it's really good because effectively, Peter, what it tries to, where it tries to place people, if you're reading this as a company owner and you want to try and get a bit of a sense of where you were on this, there's sort of an arc of like surviving remotely and some of the typical tropes of that would be there's like an office first culture uh the people who go to the office would be more advantaged and would be seen as maybe more pagan or more enthusiastic than remote workers uh and it tends to be a wee bit disrupted in that and disjointed and in, in that way whereas you go right through that arc then there's four stages of it but you go right through the other end which would be thriving obviously and in that situation, you've got a company there that works better than ever remotely because they've got all the procedures and policies in place. They've got proper equipment for their people. They're relaxed about where work takes place and they're focused more on outputs rather than inputs. And you've got all these types of things going on. So I'd really encourage people to go and check out that model. You can download it from Google Remote's website and try and check out where you are. Uh, because the reality is that as we consider employment in the future, employees will see remote work less as a benefit of working for a company. You know, people advertise it in that way. I'm more of like an actual prerequisite for them going to work for them or go work for them. My prediction isn't just to say that I think everybody uh, should be uh, is going to be working from home. I think it's a really bad idea. Uh, I've got my own office in Belfast that I like to go to. But I think that and the reason for that is because I feel like we will never, ever not need physical connection with people, speaking to people, uh, going for lunch, going to the shop, you know, all these nice things, making friendships, uh, building relationships with people. We're never going to not want to do that. That's going to be a, a big thing. My challenge to employers is more around like remote work and seeing remote work as work from anywhere, which could be from home maybe, but it could also be from a remote working hub. It could also be hot desking. It could also be trying to think about and seeing the quality of life of employees as a paramount and a priority and a business priority. That's kind of how I see it and how I see it playing out. So my my prediction would be that this is a trend which will continue into the future. I, I, I don't see us ever going back to where we were previously. Um, certainly, e even if, if locally that is anecdotally some of the experience, that's definitely not the direction of travel around the world and it's not what we're hearing working with employers in this in this way what are some of the challenges that employers have in you know creating remote teams and building that environment for for their team uh it, it obviously it depends on like the job and the sector however i would say consistently that when we're speaking to clients one of the, and generally the people that we're working with, it's usually around onboarding, Peter. So uh, if you can imagine in the past, if you were new to a company, like first day of school, big part of probably the key parts actually of going to work for a company are, or going to start a new job. What do I need to do my job? And how do I know I'm doing a good job? Like those types of things. 
but also how, how quickly can I learn about the culture of this organization, i.e. Uh, how we do business, how we speak to each other, how we transact, that the days work, like how we do all that stuff. Uh, that's more difficult if you don't have uh, remote work set up properly because by going into the office, we just learn that stuff. We tend to learn it a little bit quicker because we're surrounded by other people. People are more e e able to step in and see if we're making mistakes and help us with that. Uh, there's and there's more of a, a bit of a relationship building aspect of it and that sort of internal networking where people are able to meet others in the office. So what we're hearing is that that onboarding side is probably the biggest challenge of it all. But again, it's it's that's just a challenge, you know, that we can overcome. And I think that actually when onboarding is done wrong, even in, because it can be done wrong in a physical way, people spend a lot of money on, two days of talks and welcome events and goodie bags and everything else. But really most people who are attending that, if we take like a graduate scheme, for example, they're just looking for those things. How quickly can I learn the culture of this organization? And how quickly can I get up to speed and start performing in my job? But these are the things they're kind of keen to find out. And there's ways to do that much more effectively, much more efficiently, and much more cost effectively, cheaper than having this kind of, um, two-day showpiece event, you know, and actually turn this two-day showpiece event into an eight, 10, 12-week engagement campaign where you're sending uh, their line manager a reminder that Peter's been at the business line for four weeks. Why don't you take him out for a cup of coffee? And by the way, here's some questions to ask him about how he's getting on, you know, doing this type of thing, which embraces digital technology and actually is, is much better at thinking about building a relationship with somebody rather than spending all that money on those kind of big shoe piece events. So I would I would see I would see that onboarding being a challenge because a lot of companies aren't doing that type of thing because they're trying to replicate what it's like in the office online, uh, which doesn't work. So it's about being creative with how to overcome that problem uh, for me. I would I would say that uh, other than that, other than the onboarding piece, the how we connect, socialize do meaningful things together uh we're falling a little bit short on that as well and obviously that's a lot of what my business does so we're going to sound a little bit biased however that's why that's why we're that's why we're popular because people are in need obviously of that type of thing and being able to come in and do it so i would just encourage people to always be thinking about remember we're working online remember the importance of connection remember the importance of checking in with people and try and get people together as, as often as you possibly can. It's really important. So it would be those two things, onboarding and, and staying connected, which may come as a surprise. Uh, there's so much there. But one thing that just jumps out, you know, I think that there's a bit of magic that happens, especially in the kind of business that I'm in, the advertising, uh, digital mm -hmm. marketing world, where... When you're in the office and you're around the table mm -hmm. and you're throwing ideas about about things, that's a little bit of berry dust or pixie dust that happens in the room that very difficult to um, replicate. Well, I have found it very difficult to replicate while on a video while on while on Zoom. But you bring up a really interesting point. Well, sorry, two things. One. First of all, I haven't really tried. I've just assumed that we couldn't couldn't really do that. We can't really throw about those those uh, those ideas. But you mentioned something that feels kind of related to that. We're trying to replicate the office online and not doing it particularly particularly well. So it sounds like you're saying to me that it sounds like you're saying that um we shouldn't just try to do the same thing as we did in the office while we're working working from home. We need to work in a way that adapts to that to that new yeah. new reality. Well, think about this. You're talking about a kind of brainstorming and I appreciate in the creative industries. Stuff like that is like, you know, one of the cornerstone pillars of your work probably. Um, but if you think about being online, the amount of access that you have to online tools which can make that experience so much more meaningful and productive and better than you would if you 
we're just getting a flip chart out and writing on it and in person saying that's what you're doing but i'm saying that like the advent of technology makes working online easier and i see so many companies basically doing what you're doing but just being on zoom i'm like that would never work that's not going to work because you i agree you're going to lose that um kinetic thing that goes on where people are able to kind of spark off each other's ideas so i would say that there's a real opportunity that's being missed at the moment to embrace technology and use that to our advantage online but it, it's to that point of not trying to replicate the office in an online environment it's almost trying to like rethink what we're doing a little bit and the way we're working together as well and it's, it's to say as well that the some companies lots of companies and particularly in northern ireland that are geographically closer together where people live because people live in lisburn and bangor and whatever it's not that hard to meet up usually the people we're working with peter excuse me they've got they've got people on a call from singapore and dublin and america and kenya and like these people will never ever meet online and they do or rather offline um they do say that necessity is a mother of invention in that in that way and i don't want to sound too cliche but what really if you're never ever going to get the chance to meet in person you kind of have to make it work because you're not going to get the opportunity it's like we'll just talk about this when we're in the meeting room next week they're never going to be in the meeting room ever they're always going to be distance and disparate so we need to find ways for these people to be productive uh online or on chat this is the other thing i was going to say as well sorry um if you'll indulge me for a second absolutely but obviously you've indulged me a lot actually already so thank you very much but just to say that um uh, obviously, in the nature of the work that we do, we try to ground the work in various different models and how people learn, how people contribute and talk and think about people's personalities, etc. Within a group of people, it's likely that there will be individuals who will contribute better by, uh, by writing things, by listening and reflecting, and then coming back by... Uh, getting things presented to them in a visual way there will also be people in that group who like me and it's i i've always i've always struggled with this with this thing of we're in a room i've got a blank piece of paper let's just start writing ideas i find my brain like i forget my own name never mind what i'm supposed to be doing i find that really hard that kind of task however if i'm able to go away and sit with a piece of paper like i did earlier this week and just write my thoughts and then present that back to somebody i find that much easier so wh where we're going with this point i'm simply saying that like because online we're using these different tools like miro things like this which require us to write things see things listen to things whatever you actually i think bring more people into the conversation than you would maybe if you were in a meeting room and you had 10 people around the table and you were your expectation was that every person is going to be able to contribute to that conversation in an equal way because i think that's unlikely I think it's more likely that if you're able to have multiple routes, multiple ways into that conversation, i.e. audio, video, writing, whatever, reflection, I think you're going to actually get much more meaningful contributions and they'll be more productive. But online forces you to do that. So you're trying to have, so you might get more out of them almost than if you were sitting around in a meeting room. So that I just wanted to speak to that as well, because I think that's, maybe a salient point in this conversation as well around how you can get more people, how, how you can actually start thriving online and start working better than you maybe ever did in the office. Yeah, you've given me so much to, to think about um, with all, with all, right. all, all that. <laughs> ab ab absolutely. And uh, I tell you what, it really has changed um, the way I'm probably going to approach tomorrow, um, you know, with our, with our team, I, I think, I think we're missing the trick to um, embrace a little bit further. We should have been doing that before. You know, we should have been been more on the ball with this. And I think, I think what happens is people end up being getting quite comfortable. And by people, I mean me. And you know, by comfortable, I mean not pushing the boundaries. Whenever you, whenever you get a certain, so we at the moment we have one day a week in the office and four days a week not in the not in the office, and that just exists because it seemed to work um or not seem to work it seemed to it's just how how it is but maybe we, i think we need to maybe look at what we're doing a little bit a little bit deeper in order to look at what we're doing a little bit deeper and for our audience 
Um, what you mentioned Miro, I am reasonably familiar I'm with sorry. Miro. I think that it's a, I think it's a whiteboarding app, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah. What are some of the great, um, what are some of the great tools that people can use that are available um, to 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 be to be able to collaborate together online? Yeah, and I just mentioned Miro because we had a Miro ses session today and it was from my mind. But just to define that, I'm sure maybe most people have used it a, a little bit, but it's a collaboration tool effectively. It's uh, and what I mean by that is, if you can imagine a whiteboard, like like you said, it is like a digital whiteboard. But we can all sign into that, so you and I can sign into it now and be writing things on it and adding um, post-it notes and different things. We can also save that, come back to it later, send it, share it with our colleagues, so that uh, share that link. They can come on and add things as well. So it's it's really trying to speak into this space of collaboration and thinking about well, lots of the time when we're working, we're on very rarely working under our own steam. We're usually working with others. So it's important to get buy-in and input from them. Uh, Miro is a great way to, as a stick of vehicle to do that. So, uh, and and there's loads of free versions. By the way, all the stuff I'm saying, there's like basically a free version of every single one of them. So you don't have to spend any money uh, to start using some of this stuff. It's, it's really, really good. Um, some of the other stuff that we use, like in our own business, uh, the kind of two that I really like, um, Slack is a really good one. If you're working online, you probably use it at the minute. Uh, you may not use it to its, its full potential, but for those of you that don't know Slack, it's, it's effectively WhatsApp with lots of different mini WhatsApp groups in it uh, without the notifications, uh, I would say, which is great because um, we're all sick of WhatsApp groups and not WhatsApp notifications, but it's it's awesome. Uh, very, very powerful piece of kit. And you can have lots of like kind of side chats in it as well, rather than just being part of the main discussion, which is, which is useful if you've got teams and departments and projects and that type of stuff. Uh, I would say something else that we just get so much mileage out of as a company and, and we are happy to, we've been happy to share with lots of our clients is our Typeform. Uh, Typeform, which is a form software, which we use within some of the work we do when we're doing, carrying out like staff surveys, feedback on projects, feedback on events, this type of thing. The reason why it's good and the reason why companies should use it is because it's both visually co quite compelling. It's not like a Google form, which is um, really basic and, and Google's great, but it's like simple. Uh, type form tends to be a little bit, you can you can do more with it. It's a bit more powerful and there's really nice reporting with it as well. So if you want to run an engagement campaign in your own company and you want to see how people are, what people's setups like at home, that type of thing, you can collect all this information uh, and be able to present it back really quickly. So if you're someone that's kind of working in that middle management type position and you're managing up as well as down, it's a, it's a really, really good tool. I uh, really like that. I would also tell people that, you know, one of the best things you can do, I think as a, and you're asking about tools right now, but one of the best things you can do as anybody that's working in this space is try and think about, well, where are the people right now? And the people are on social media. So rather than trying to take everyone away, from those to come to your Zoom call, to come to your mirror board, to come to your uh, place and where you want them to be, why not try and go to where they are? So like some of the stuff that's been successful in other companies that that we've been working with has been taking advantage of YouTube, having stuff recorded on YouTube and sharing that because when you get people to subscribe to the channel, they'll get recommended stuff as, as well from the from the piece within the company. Um, using things like LinkedIn groups and embracing that because people are on LinkedIn. So and trying to trying to do it in this more effective way because really that's that's it. We're we're constantly thinking about sorry soapbox now, but we're constantly thinking about how can we take people away from where they are when I think sometimes it's much easier just to go to where they are and bring the stuff that we want to them rather than trying to get them to come with us all the time. So um yeah I would say in summary, uh, I think Miro is really nice. Slack check it out, it's free, uh, and Typeform, there's a free version of that as well, brilliant, we use it all the time, and it's so powerful, uh, it's really good, so if you're not using any of those, get started on it, and see how you get on. Yes, I, it's a bit of a hack, but I, I also, over time, I've used a lot of the tools that are out there on the internet to, um, yeah. you know, drive the business forward, whether it be whiteboarding, or, collaboration on documents uh, 
things things like that and i've managed as you say a lot of them are free and you don't have to pay anything i've always managed mm-hmm. to find something free you know that i can use that that does the job that i need like for example um there's a a process mapping technology called um oh i can't remember what it's called but it costs something anyway. it costs like 40 dollars a month and mm-hmm. I actually found that I already had that functionality in Google Drive on Google Drawings where I could do exactly what I was being what I was paying for. So I thought to myself, you do know, this is this is something I don't want to pay for. I want to do do it for I want to do it for free and you can. So so that's awesome. Um William, thank you so much for all the insights that you've given us. Did you tell me that you had an event coming up? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, I probably did. Yeah, so uh, I was talking earlier on about the importance. I think about pushing the conversation um, on the remote work forward here locally. And when I say locally, I mean in uh, in Northern Ireland. So we have a grow remote event, first one. Um, I think maybe the first event ever of this type um, in Northern Ireland, which is really been focused on remote work, excuse me. And it's going to take place on Friday, the 23rd of September, which the Eagle Guide among you will know that that's next Friday. Uh, Friday, the 23rd of September at 6 p.m. So it's a post-work thing. Uh, and it's going to take place at River House, clockwise at River House on High Street in Belfast. So we're trying to bring together remote workers from both County Down and County Antrim. Also, all the people are welcome as well if you're not in either of those counties. But that's where we're starting with it. We're trying to, we're trying to get those people together. Because it's a Friday, Peter, uh, it will be light and entertaining. It's not going to be light entertainment, but it will be light and entertaining. So there will be some refreshments both alcoholic and non-alcoholic for attendees who come along to that event it is a free event to attend we're also going to be hearing from some people that have been making some great waves in remote work and uh some people in the environmental space as well because this event really is about celebrating the impact of remote work on our culture and our communities because it has an enormous impact on both of those things but also on our environment as well so we're going to be hearing about uh, about, about that third thing from some amazing people in that space. So I'm really excited about the event at 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, so uh, and, uh, after that, I'm sure we'll maybe just go around the corner for a drink as well. More details will be will be about that on the night. But we'd love uh, more people to come. We've got, I think, uh, 100 or so people signed up on LinkedIn so far. So uh, if you're if you're in Belfast next Friday and you want to hang about just a bit after work, please do come and see us. At Clockwise Belfast and River House on High Street. Love to see you there. Yeah, I'm gonna want to give a, a shout out to my currently absent co host, um, Martin. It was Martin that actually connected um, us all up together here to have you on, w- William. Um, and uh, that's awesome. So, Martin did excellently to have us um, together. Um, and also, um, Martin is, uh, I think, very looking forward to going to mm-hmm. uh, the the meetup on on Friday. Uh, so yeah, how do people uh, sign up for it? If our users are, if our listeners are, uh, our people, our our tribe, if they're if they're watching, um, how do they how do they sign up? How do they find the, the link? If you put in "grow remote down in Antrim" uh, into LinkedIn, you'll find it. You'll see it there. You can register. You can also sign up via Eventbrite if you wish. If you put in the CM, uh, if you search for the same event, if you can't find either of those places, do feel free to hop on over to my own LinkedIn account, uh, William Redpath on LinkedIn. You'll see the event front and center there. So feel free to sign up uh, via my LinkedIn account if you don't find it anywhere else. But I'm sure you'll you'll see it soon enough. Uh, it's on LinkedIn on Eventbrite. Yeah, I I think that's so funny. Um, how I mean. P- We'll put it in the comments down below uh, somewhere, but it's it's so funny. Like years ago, you had to say like www dot whatever slash dot com. These days, you know, just Google it or Google the person. You'll you'll come yeah. you'll come close to it. You'll you'll get close enough to uh to to attend it. It's we- it's weird, like how quickly we like get used to convenience as well. And like, it's interesting, you know, I've mentioned about, uh, <laughs> I mentioned about getting the office. I I actually get the bus uh, to Belfast because I just can't handle the, the traffic at all. And it's weird how I like have got out of the way of doing that. But I guess that's it because we're used to convenience. Uh, certainly over the last few years, I've been able to do a lot of business online. 
when and when we have to go and do business and we're in traffic we're like oh i wish this could have been on zoom you know it's this whole thing of like just being able to access things immediately at our fingertips in the same way as you can by signing up for this event it's just so easy to do yeah well i mean there's it's interesting because googling things even people google things that they shouldn't google people google things like i i google my website to get to my website and i know my website i can i I know my website like i know my phone number you know i can get to it (laughs) Uh, but i go through google i don't click on the ads that we've got but i go to the organic ads and i i click it um but it's Mm -hmm. it's it's mad um william i have to uh from martin and i thank you so much for um connecting with us and our audience uh this has been a real uh journey I, as I said, have taken so much from what you've uh, said. And, and I think, mm-hmm. um, I imagine you'll impact uh, people that are watching this on the playback. Um, you've definitely impacted at least one person, me, to make some differences and make some changes in the okay. in the way that we're doing things for the better, I'm sure. Um, I think that uh, perhaps we'll want to engage with you for your um services in the in the future to maybe have one of those games or you know do something like that with the team or or even for you to look at it and see what you're, what you're doing i think you're doing a really really uh important thing um oh, thanks, same, over really over to that. over to yourself um what is there anything you want to let our audience know or anything you want to end with or anything you want to anything you want to plug or or go over before we before we finish up um i think that uh, at the moment, uh, I've kind of plugged. I've kind of plugged what I'm really into, which is the remote work thing. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to to do that. That's what we're working on right now. Uh, I do talk to people about. Um, I just maybe finish with this little point, but like people talk to me sometimes about sales and marketing and you know getting themselves out there or whatever. And I would always encourage people to try and think about well, is there? And I don't want to get too high in the sky about this, but is there something? that you can do or you're working towards in your, in your business, which may, may be bigger than you, right? So is maybe more important than just getting money. And like, if that is the case, then how can you get people along in that journey with you? And for me, the remote working thing and being able to help people access remote work, more people in the work, workforce, I think that is a worthy goal for me. And it's about working towards that. And by virtue of doing that, that's helping me increase my visibility, you know, increase my credibility and everything being on that journey. So I would just maybe think that people to encourage people to think about that. It's like, what sort of stuff is around my business in the world that I in, uh, which is really worth promoting, not just for me, but just for like society in general. And then just like put all your energy into that. I would just like kind of encourage people to, to think about it. I think beyond that, what I would say, Peter, as well is, I would always say this to anyone, I'm very, very happy to speak to anybody about anything around remote work or some of the issues that we have covered tonight on a completely I'm happy to help basis because uh, it's really lovely to have someone to reach out to you and ask you for that assistance and there doesn't have to be a commercial angle for that I'm, I'm really happy to help anybody so if you want to uh, get in contact via LinkedIn or anything for that then please please do so I'd be very happy to, to answer any further questions or assist anyone in any way I can. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's really, really cool. Um, I've not heard that really before, where you encourage people to think beyond. I'll, you know, I'll work for free. <laughs> yeah, no, no, well, that, that 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 actually is a very um, that actually is a very common uh, feature. I think of our Northern Ireland, Ireland, UK network yeah, I agree. that that we've got here, where you know, I mean, yeah. I, don't can't think of a time whenever someone's told me to clear off whenever I've asked them for advice or asked them, you know, if they know how to do something. And if they don't know, regularly they go, Well, hold on, I know someone who might who might know. Yeah. Um yeah. and I think that's a cool, a really awesome part of it. And, and, and yeah. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead, sorry. Um, although I was just gonna say that that's kind of how I like to do business with people as well. Like, you know, with my client, for example, I like just to be able to ask them a question and not get an invoice or I like to be able to speak to somebody I know is a real expert and just to help them because I like to do that as, as well. That sounds all very transactional, but it is really about this kind of like, how about we just try helping people and try doing that more rather than just trying to get paid all the time. And actually 
if you do that, you probably will down the line lead to more business opportunities because people will know that guy's actually a really nice person or he's really good at his job or he knows a lot of stuff. So you should definitely go and like use him for that thing that you need that you need to do. If you actually try and take that approach, I know it seems a bit counterintuitive, but in the long run it does work. You know, people really do really do buy into that kind of attitude. Uh, so and I, and I, I agree with you. I think a lot of people in this part of the world are extremely charitable and generous with their time, which you kind of mentioned earlier on around, you know, asking for feedback about your ideas from people. Just go out there and do it. Yeah. That's I it. mean, you look at our little network here uh, right now, you know, Michelle and Martin Kilchrist, you know, before business conversations, um, uh, I've asked both Martin and Michelle for advice on on things yeah. and and help on yeah, things, and the generosity with their time has been in, been in, been incredible. Um, James on the on the call as well, um, always um, open to giving his time to you know go over anything, um, and that's incredible. I think too about the. The Wayne Danners and the Martin Murdas of the world, yeah, and yeah. there they have their you guys. You know, that you were on the the Meet the Change Maker, um, yeah. the Twitter space, the LinkedIn, uh, and on all of those uh, publications that they do, like, like that's awesome. You know, that's really that's really cool. And the the fact that, that you know we could do it, yeah. but I don't think we take I don't think we take advantage of it enough. I think we enjoy being able to to help, and I rarely it's it's when it's only when things are going badly in some area. That I'm like, oh, I need to talk to them about that and see how that how that goes. But actually, if things were going well, or even if things were going moderately bad, if we reached out a bit more to each other, um, I think we might go further. I think we might, I think we might, we might do do better. I also love what you I said a little while ago about the, you know, find something greater than yourself in in you know your work and and see if you can can focus on on that. I, I think that's a game changer. I think that really can it help is. you be happier in in what you're doing yeah. as well. Even you know I. I don't think I'm not sure I would be happy working in a business. Uh, I would do it, but I think my I I love being able to sort of control my own destiny mm -hmm. in in that way. But if I was, you know, I would want to you know have something that wasn't just the nine to five or wasn't just the the day to day um work. I think that would be that would be awesome. Um, William, we have talked for an hour. Um, and nope. I, as I said, I really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to put in your website and everything in the comments. I'll put in the oh, link thanks. for uh, Grow Remote as as well. I, I'll thank you one more time. Just thank you so much for uh, you know being a being a part of this, Martin. And I really, really, really appreciate it. And to uh, James and Michelle, thank you very much for listening uh, to us this this evening. Um, and that is it, folks. We will wrap it up. Uh, there, that was episode 17 of the Business Conversations video cast with myself and Martin, and we'll be back uh, next week. And if you uh, want to come on and talk about your business or talk about business or you've heard anything that you want to, you know, interact with us on, then reach out to one of us, uh, LinkedIn or Google or Carrier Pigeon or whatever way it is that you uh, you speak to people. Um, just pick up the whatever it is and uh, get in, get in touch. And as Martin and I will say, you know, subscribe to this, like it, let us know what you think, good or bad. Um, and it, it will all be much appreciated. And we'll see you next week on the next episode. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, William. I'm just going to hit this stop.